So guys, it's the last podcast of the year, episode number 270, and the man with me tonight is the voice of the Buffalo Bills fan base, because whenever win, lose, draw, even though draws rarely happen in the NFL, Joe is the man that gives it back to the people of Buffalo, the city of good neighbors. How are you tonight, sir? I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. You know what? You can't complain. It's that like week after Christmas where it's like work's not really that busy. I'm not sure if you're on. Or, I know a lot of people are on and off this week. I'm, I am unfortunately have to work this week, but it is what it is. And, you know, just resting, relaxing, getting to watch some football tonight. There's more football coming like the next few days with all the crazy bowl games, mm. NFL football mm. and all that fun stuff, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a good weekend. This is always my favorite time of the year when there's games on Saturday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. <laughs> and I'm going to start with this because I know I didn't talk about it right away, but I feel like as after you and I had our rundown, I had to bring it up. But next year, we're going to get a game on a Wednesday, and I guarantee you that because hmm. there's no way that the NFL sees an average of 28.3 million viewers and goes, we can play on Christmas and people are going to watch and we're going to quadruple the NBA's viewership. Like, like yeah. The owners are going to see that money and they're going to go, they'll find a way. I don't know if it'll be the best for like playing wise, but you know that like, hey, they can watch it. Even too, I saw the numbers come in today from your game as well. And it was the highest, I think the highest rated mm -hmm. thing on primetime Saturday night with the Bills and Chargers. Yeah, you would think that they could find a way to put a game on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, I mean, they can't interfere. There's there's some old law that they can't interfere with college games. So they can't be within a certain time limit of a college game being televised from like, I think that law was in, like put in the 80s, the 70s or 80s or something like that. But you would think that they could find a way to schedule wise and not put people on like three day weeks or like a four day week. Like you you think they could get rid of the, the short week from Thursday, Sunday to Thursday, but who knows? I mean, it's... I feel like the college thing, too, it's kind of like an unspoken bond where it's kind of like, we know you're the kings, but let us have our day in the sun. You guys have your day that everyone worships, for lack of a better word. And Dude, college college fans will tell you that that they would not say that the NFL is the king. College fans, like true college purists, don't like the NFL. They they don't believe it's real football because the guys are getting paid. And it's like, how can you, how can you tell me that just because a guy is getting paid, he is now not one of the top half a percent of athletes that played college football because there's like what is there 1500 or 2000 co no it's even more than that there's some crazy amount of college athletes in the system and like a minuscule amount of them actually make it to the pros and play on Sunday it's like they are the best of the best of the best of the there's only what 48 100%. of them <laughs> there's only 48 of them per team and only about 22 of those actually get to play significant snaps yeah it's crazy because that's the thing, like the jump from like high school to college is one thing, and like I've even seen people make that argument too of, oh, like why doesn't the like college football have a one and done? And it's like, right, because there's a difference between the NBA and the NFL. With the NFL, you're literally going up. I know both are grown men, but the grown in an NFL man, like that G is capitalized, probably about as big as this wall you see right behind me. You know, <laughs> right. Fair, yeah. fair, true, true story. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off about the college thing. It's just I lived in Columbus, Ohio, for yeah. a long time, which is like right there with you know whatever whatever city alabama's in like all they have is the buckeyes and for them it, you know the nfl is wildly inferior it's like it's completely inferior and it's like you guys are crazy i i understand that it's just the way i view it i i, I don't have a college team per se i just like to watch it but then sundays we have the day where it's our team the one day of the week and all that stuff but yeah, with your yeah. team right now Look, this it's been a I, I want to call it a I don't know what the right word to use wonky, goofy, interesting, just everything that's happened. Because I know we spoke before the first Bills Pats game announced yeah. the second Bills Pats game, and, and boy were we wrong. <laughs> we probably should have done a post game show, the two of us together, <laughs> to like talk about what happened because we were both off as far as that goes. Because that game was just like I, I should say this where it's just like. What seems like now Max grand finale as a New England Patriot. Like, that's ultimately what that game was. To see him go more than anything in that game, it was the fact that he let a two-minute drive down the field to win yeah. the game. That was yeah. my moment of, what the, what the hell was that? And, and to Mike Kosicki, no less, where it was just this weird combination of things. And then, so there's a lot of weirdness right now with the Patriots and their fan base, which... I don't know if you do this, but when I say a fan base, I always like to say Twitter because you can usually just tap into a fan base's Twitter pretty quickly. Like I've seen a lot of the Mafia's Twitter this week just leading up to the game. Patriots Twitter right now because they're really weirdly undecided on where to go. And there's still the Mac truthers out there, but I've always said this from the jump that I'll root for the guy who gives my team the best chance to win. And so far they've seen that from Zappy. 
It was Zappy last year. It was Zappy yeah. last year. Yeah, right. Uh, last year there was just the weirdness of that one Bears game where Max mm-hmm. should not have started. He should not have played. That should have been mm-hmm. Bailey Zappy. Right. And this year was just. I said this too, where it was the Colts game in Germany, where I'm like, that was my final straw. I'm done. And then ever since Zappy's played, sure they lost to the Chargers six nothing, and then they lost to the Chiefs. But besides that, his ability to get out of pressure, his Face when he gets sacked isn't as bad because I know that's something you've pointed out as well. Max sack face really is not something pleasant to look at. <laughs> and also to the fact that he can make those tight window throws and you're not holding your breath saying, oh, shit, it's going to be picked off. You're talking about Zappy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the wild thing for me is when I when I compare the two, Zappy looks like an NFL quarterback. I'm not saying that he's refined and he's there and he's no. landed and he's going to be a great quarterback. But but watching Mac Jones, as much as this will hurt a lot of the Truthers fans, I've never heard of a Mac Jones Truther, but it, it might hurt their fan, they hurt their their feelings, those fans' feelings. He doesn't look like an NFL quarterback to me. Like when you watch him play football, he doesn't have that NFL quarterback command. The Joe, I mean, Joe Flacco's on TV. When Joe Flacco walks on a football field, you're like, that's an NFL quarterback. He's 50 years old, but that's an NFL quarterback right there. Like he's just like uh, Zach Wilson is the same way. Zach Wilson just doesn't have that command. And Zappy seems to have it, whereas Mac Jones just doesn't. It's a little weird, but. Is it a weird take too to say that Justin Fields right now is looking like the best quarterback from that draft? And he still might be a bust, but yes, 100 percent Yeah, that draft was just really weird. Even last year's too, like right now at this moment, Bailey's looking like the most playable option from last year's draft because yeah. literally yeah. you look at all the options from last year. This year's panning out to be great. CJ Stroud looks incredible for Houston. Unbelievable. Uh, he might be the very well, I guess ju- depending on Justin Fields, Stroud might be the first quarterback osu actually puts in the nfl because every one of them before that were awful they were great in college but run to the right run to the left run up the middle but they can't throw footballs uh but it'll be interesting to see what, what justin fields does you were going to ask me a question about the oddity of the season for the bills but i yes. cut you off so sorry like the weird that. way like the wording to describe it because i have a couple other questions i'm just so curious about when it comes to your team sure sure the wording to describe it as far it's just been a very it's it's been a season where when the Chiefs have started out this way, they've turned it around immediately and been dominant. You know, we saw the 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 Brady led Patriots start the season this way a couple times and turn around and 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 were dominant. And this football this Bills football team has all the makings of being dominant. There's just a a lack of I don't know what it was until it mattered. And like even the Eagles game, the last game that the Bills won or lost rather, they should have won if it wasn't for coaching like McDermott got out coached in that game and he learned from that game. So we have dealt with, so going back in time there since 13 seconds, which I was at that football game against the chiefs in Kansas city, there's been a lot of people talking about that. We're raising the fire McDermott flag and 98% of the fan base was like, you're insane. Like you are literally insane. If you want to fire Sean McDermott, and since that game, like that, that feeling has spread slowly until this year. And this year, when it came to in-game adjustments, when it came to bad time man- clock management, when it came to at the end of the game, and I'm the guy that coined the phrase for your viewers and listeners that, that have seen it. You know, how many times does Josh Allen have to walk off the field a winner to walk to the lo- the, wa- the locker room a loser? 13 seconds, he did it twice. He won that game twice in that 13 seconds game and still walked off the field a loser it's happened four times this year so that's where like it really started to like bolster and like get hot like if that that sean mcdermott might not be the guy like he might not be the dude that's going to take this team to the promised land and he hadn't learned from any of his mistakes over the last several years well since that eagles game they did exactly what they always do the bills were up by several possessions And they allowed the Eagles, they went total prevent, bend but don't break, keep everything in front of you. The Eagles scored 30 points. They 20 seconds left with two timeouts. They don't put Josh Allen on the field. They have Neil on the football. The the whole thing was just a mess. And since that time, McDermott has been more aggressive. He's been more in the end of football games. We're going to, if we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging. We saw it in the last game. So all that to say this, the Bills have done a good job of turning it around. And now that the, the pressure's on, but man, wouldn't it be nice to not have to win out to make it? Wouldn't it be nice to not have to win out and then win four more games to, to win the Super Bowl? The whole thing is just crazy. And to, to make matters even more strange, and literally, this is where it gets mind-blowing. The Bills were in 11th place three weeks ago in the AFC. 11th. Now, that's not necessarily all the Bills' fault outside of the fact that they've lost some games. It was a 
it was a hairy mess at six and six and seven and six, but the bills were in 11th place. So they dug a hole, then dug a hole in the hole and jumped in it. So they were in a hole in a hole, 11th place. If they beat the, uh, the Patriots this week and the dolphins lose to the Ravens that game next week, bills, Miami in Miami, which should have the dolphins shaking in their boots a little bit. If the bills win that game, they're the two seed. They go from the 11th seed <laughs> to the two seed in a matter of four or five weeks. It's just, and that I think sums up the whole season. Like there's just a, I don't even know. There's not a word to describe it. It's been maddening. And at the end of the day, it might pay off and we'll end up with the two seed and get bounced from the playoffs in the first round, knowing our luck. Like it's just, there's, it's just been a weird, strange year that's inexplicable and un. it doesn't need to happen. The, the, none of this needed to happen. And by the way, I know you're about to say something for all of those of, you know, where are you Joe on the fire Sean McDermott fence? I am well spoken and uh, recorded and noted and in Twitter that if the Buffalo bills missed the playoffs to the Browns, the Steelers and the, the Broncos, like if those teams made it to the playoffs and the bills didn't fire Sean McDermott, but if they make it in, then we're having a different conversation. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I also think that that Bronco game was a blessing in disguise for his job security as well, because Dorsey, I don't, it was a special teams blunder, which going back to 13 seconds too, <laughs> I remember, I always remember this, that for the longest time, I wasn't sure what happened there. And then neither, you know, neither, me either. <laughs> but the wonderful Greg Thompson, a cover one, cleared it up for me when he came on here and said that it was a special teams blunder. They meant to boot it. They accidentally squibbed yeah. it. And then the special teams coach was just vanished without a trace. To, but the defense, but the defense still gave up two huge plays that allowed them to kick, that allowed Bucker to kick a foot, foot, a field goal to tie the game to send it to overtime, which Tyreek Hill ended it right. So, or no, I'm sorry, it wasn't. It was Travis Kelsey that ended it. Yes, yeah. yes. But then I just think going back to the McDermott stuff, I was always on the fence of like, okay, where's this going to go with his job security? I still think next year, regardless, they have to get a proper DC in there. I know he's a defensive minded guy, yeah. but I don't think he can wear both hats. Um, I will say this. I think Brady's earned his right, which feels weird to say Brady and Buffalo, but uh, Brady's earned his right as OC, you know, to be the OC of the Bills next year. Um, But with the with the Dorsey stuff, though, I always had my red flags about him with the little Miami meltdown last year. Just the Mm. can't the fact he couldn't keep his composure during the loss. Oh, I loved it. I, I absolutely, I absolutely loved the fire and Dable. We're seeing Dable on the sideline. Dable has that fire too. There's, there, it's not, it's not the in-game stuff as far as Brian or uh, uh, Ken Dorsey that like that moment. It's something between Sundays where he just doesn't. There's just I, there are mysteries that we may never learn. How much of a hand in the offensive scheme was McDermott a part of why did he not fire him sooner why did he fire Ken Dorsey after a special teams blunder they lost the Broncos game because of 12 men on the field like that isn't Ken Dorsey's fault why did you fire him there it it clearly is at this point working I think the biggest difference between and this is storied as well Brian Dable who you guys should know he was there for a while Mm -hmm. uh is an incredibly great uh offensive designer right and he comes from a lot of those guys you know that, that you guys had there um not mike mcdaniel uh mcdaniels uh yeah give me give me his first name josh I want, josh yes i wanted to say sean it's definitely not sean josh <laughs> mcdaniels and some of those guys that are there i mean bill o'brien is a pretty decent you know designer of offenses but there was always a conversation about how well he felt what was happening in the game was important. So it was, it, there was a disconnection like, Oh, that's a brilliant play. But like, sometimes like, why are you calling it now? Like what is happening? Ken Dorsey was even worse. And I think the biggest difference between Ken Dorsey and Joe Brady, cause he's obviously running Ken Dorsey's offense right now because he has to, he just has a better feel for what's happening on the football field, which is insane. When you think that Ken Dorsey was an NFL quarterback, you think that he would know, and I was talking with John Fien and Jerry Ostrowski, some former Bills that I do podcasts with, and they were like, you know, sometimes these offensive coordinators get very tangled and tied up in, well, we practiced it, we've got to run it, right? We, we, we put it in the game plan, so we've got to run it somewhere. Let's just run it here. And they'll run plays, and you'll see all kinds of offensive coordinators do it. And we as the fans are like, why in the hell did you run that play there? That made And it didn't work. Why would you do it? Well, we practiced it, and they won't ever say that. Joe Brady, literally against the Dallas Cowboys, realized that the Cowboys could not stop James Cook. And he just ran the same play at them over 
and over and over again. And when he was, and they asked Mitch Morse, they asked, asked Josh, they asked Tom, uh, Joe Brady. They asked everybody. They're like, was it part of the game plan to run the ball that much? And they were like, nope, they just couldn't stop it. So we just kept running it. <laughs> it's like, give me more of that. <laughs> like, give me situational football where somebody's like, if you can't stop this play, I'm going to run it at you three times and get it eight yards every time. And the funny thing is, like, the Patriots have done that to, to us before. There's times it's like, I know what's coming because we can't stop it. Sure enough, here comes, you know, back then it was Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. You know what I mean? It's just straight mm -hmm. up the middle because the Bills can't stop it. So just, and you guys would just run it. And Tom Brady didn't care. He's like, here's the football. Here's the football. Here's the football. And just like, good God, make it stop. It, it, so, it's yeah. the whole, it's the whole uh, metaphor. I, I just love the job. I love Josh's post game quote there. The whole, um, yeah, it felt like I was a part of the group project. And I didn't accomplish anything. Like, I, but, but I got, got an A. <laughs> yeah, I got an A. I didn't do shit, but I got an A. Um, right. But no, I love the reference to the law firm there. Um, but that was just the big thing with Buffalo, too, where I feel like more the less with the Ken Dorsey thing, I feel like it was like the Matt Canada firing where it was yeah. they saw it out and they took it, you know, where yeah. it's mm -hmm. like you see a chance to get out of it. So like like how those Steelers, like they kept Matt. It was like, oh, Matt Canada sucks. Why is he still here? Because they were winning. Like I know the Bills, yeah. there were some rocky roads there, but they squeaked out the Giants when they squeaked out the Buccaneers win. The Bills, the Bengals game, I think, it was still when the Bengals were the Joe Burrow Bengals, so it was kind of like is what it is. I think it was the like the way they lost the Bronco game, the fact that it was the even though now, which who knows what's going on there, but the Russell Wilson Broncos. So right, right. I think it was just a chance to also do the fact that it was a home primetime game. Like if this was the if that was the Buccaneer game, or if that Hail Mary goes through where Chris Godwin knows how to catch a football. I think that he's fired before after the Buccaneer game that Friday morning because you say that, but like Josh Allen, the Buccaneer game almost walked off the field a winner and walked to yeah. the locker room a loser. That was another one. And those, those that that wasn't. I'm not saying I'm not grateful. I'm glad Ken Dorsey is no longer the offensive coordinator for this football team. I'm mm -hmm. just putting the facts out there, which is Sean McDermott's defense has outplayed its skin like this year. Like when you consider Daquan Jones being out for the season, Matt Milano being out for the well, Daquan might come back. Matt Milano being out for the season, Tredavious White being out for the season. The losses that they have suffered have been incredible. Now, did they go get Razul Douglas from the Packers, and has he played like a, a number one wide uh, corner? Yes, they did. Is Terrell Bernard a complete surprise? Yes. I said at the beginning of the year, we don't have a starting middle linebacker on this football team, and behold, Terrell Bernard is like a machine up there. Christian Benford. Like I, 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 yeah, well, Benford is obviously a corner, but I can't wait to see Milano and Bernard next to each other. Um, <clears throat> but even with that, they have played ridiculously well, but at times situationally, they have not mostly when the bills have a lead in the second half and they've let teams back into it, which is, but anyways, that's kind of what was the giants game almost happened. The, the same thing happened there. So it's, it's, it's been, it's been nauseating. I'll when say I say that. Christian Benford, I just mean like defenders that have been playing, that have stepped up and been playing well. And also say yeah. spoke of yeah. Bernard quickly. The way that he was drafted and the way his selection was read out, it would have been disappointing to see him have been a bust. But the fact, the passion that was delivered in his draft, I remember that. I was sick with COVID that draft. So I remember <laughs> Kyle Brandt just coming on stage, making the pick, and then biting into a Buffalo wing. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm just like, you got to be good. Because if you're not, it's just letting down the draft pick. It's like yeah. if Kayvon Thibodeau didn't live up to the hype after his draft pick with the Make-A-Wish kid from the, the yeah. Giants fan going just berserk on the stage in Vegas last year. So that's yeah. just a little tidbit yeah. about Bernard I wanted to add in there. No, it's you're not you're not wrong, and I mean more so than even that is just there was a lot of trepidation and doubt because he didn't play last year. I mean, he obviously we had Tremaine and we had Milano, but even when those two were out for a couple of games here and there, he didn't play. So you, it was just if he was good last year, he would have played. So why are we to assume that he's going to be good this year? And then sure enough, it's been a Terrell Bernard coming out party. He's been great. Exactly, because like I always say this with the draft picks too, where if you hit on a day one pick, it is what it's great. You know, hey, you got your first round pick, right? But if you can hit on those day two and day three picks, it's yeah. just so yeah. much better because it shows how deep in the draft you can be. Yeah. Uh, which, speaking of which, obviously there's a player that some people have jokingly coined uh, a period player because he shows up once every four weeks. But with Gabe Davis, obviously coming Go. off a really big game last Saturday. Go to Davis, yeah. Go Davis. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to guess next year, do you think he takes like the Matt, what Matt Milano did in 21 where he takes the discount to stay in Buffalo, or do you think he jumps at the first opportunity to make money? Well, I uh, haven't looked to see necessarily what his number, what are, do you know what his numbers are this year? Gabe Davis? Yeah. So, uh, Gabe Davis, let me look him up real quick. Gabe Davis stats. Uh, 
And I called him Ghost, by the way. Ghost. Oh, Ghost. I thought you said Goat for a second. No, Ghost Davis, yeah. 43 Uh, receptions, 725 yards, seven touchdowns, and an average of 16.9 yards. That that doesn't really sound like Christian Kirk money, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't sound like a 15 to 20 million dollar a year wide receiver. I think if it's like in that 10 to 15 range, like what Jacoby Myers got, what Juju Smith Schuster got, I say those because those are right. relevant Patriot numbers that come to my mind. I think you keep him in Buffalo, or if not, or if he's like, I want this, I want that, hey, he'll make a great Atlanta Falcon. So I'm- <laughs> and disappear. Uh, I think, I mean, I think Gabe Davis is going to have a decision to make this year. He has done far more, he's been a good soldier, he is the best blocking wide receiver on this football team and has been actually for a couple of years, but he's not a small guy. He's six, one, six, two. He's a, he's a, he's not huge in stature. I've stood next to him, but he's not small. Um, and thank God the bills have stopped trying to get Khalil Shakir to block defensive ends. They're actually using Gabe Davis, which is probably isn't great either, but at least Gabe Davis has a little more of a fighting chance. Yeah. So he's kind of been a good so- soldier. So he's going to have an op- opportunity and, a, and an option to stay probably with Buffalo at a greatly reduced contract or, see what the market can bring. And we'll probably hear from Brandon Bean soon that Gabe Davis is going to get the opportunity to to go see what the market can give him. Um, I would tell you this, they're going to have a lot of ammunition against him. His catch rate in 2022 was like 51%. Uh, He's dropped a lot of balls this year. He basically can run three routes. There's really not much to Gabe Davis. If the Buffalo, the biggest problem with Gabe Davis is they don't have a John Brown or an Emmanuel Sanders in front of him to put him on a linebacker, to put him on a nickel corner, to put him on somebody that's basically not great, that he can run a double move on and be wide open. Like that's Gabe Davis excels in that situation. When he's a number two, and what the what defenses did to the Bills last year was they they basically bracketed Stephon Diggs. You guys did it, bracketed Diggs, and then put the best corner on Gabe Davis, and it shut the offense completely down because that way nobody could get open. And the Bills, I mean, they just struggled and had issues. So I think I think Gabe is going to have an, an opportunity to make a decision to stay with the team and win football games and maybe be a second role player if that makes any sense. Yeah. Or be a heralded, ride him in on a chariot, go to the Atlanta Falcons, to your point, uh, or the Raiders, someplace like that, and vanish into oblivion, get cut after two years, or maybe one like like Lawson did, Shaq Lawson did, and basically Shaq lost the defensive end for the Bills that went to Miami. and the, Yeah, Miami first, yeah. right? That's then came back to Buffalo. Um, it's going to be his decision. And I hope somebody in his life, has the opportunity to say it to him like that. You can either stay here and win football games with your friends, or you can go make an extra, what, seven million, eight million collectively over two years, and then get cut and be embarrassed and maybe end up spiraling out of the NFL in a couple of years or coming back to Buffalo. Because yeah, that's well, Buffalo's not afraid to take guys back. But that, that's a really good that's a really good way to view it though. Just the whole like, hey, do you want to like do you want to make friends or do you want to make money? Like you can do both right. in Buffalo in the sense of like, hey, you can make money. That's like good because I don't know what his contract status is right now. But if you want to go make like it's a rookie, it's a rookie deal. Yeah, it's a it's your basic rookie deal. So if he wants to go and make say four years at like forty five million, making like eleven to eleven and a half per, mm-hmm. I think that's like a very solid contract with him. Where you know, hey, you see them reduce like he can always restructure the number because like you see guys like I've seen Deion Dawkins do it a bunch restructuring. I know Dawson Knox who look I know like once again on a milk carton, but the guy did get engaged, so he's wildly overpaid right now. Yeah, wildly overpaid, but then you know he's 14 one of the million guys. A year. 14 million a year, wildly overpaid. He's one of the restructured candidates. Um, Matt Milano's another one. Josh, I know, always restructures. And then here's the other thing to consider, too, because in a couple of years, James Cook's going to be due to get paid. Because one thing I've always said about two Buffalo years, is... Two, year, two years for James Cook. Two more years for James Cook. Yes. Yeah, and uh, Gabe Davis is making uh, 2.7 this year on the last year of his rookie deal, uh, which is odd to me because he was, what, a fifth round draft pick is that right so that's fourth or fifth i believe yeah Yeah, so but it's one of those things too now where it's like hey you can get a pay bump of like eight to nine million like you don't have to jump to generational i think if he was consistently playing well not like how in the eagles game he went off and then in the then this past saturday against chargers he went off if he can finish off the season strong and the player Mm -hmm. that we saw in that buffalo game in the playoff game in buffalo against new england and then the four touchdown game against kansas city i'm not saying he's to replicate the numbers but if he can be half of what that was, or even kind of on par when it comes to yards and receptions and limit the drops, that's where he can really show Brandon, hey, I can, you know, I can come, I can stay 
be an, a, a viable asset. But at the same time, too, I think with Buffalo, they still like I would potentially look at the first or second round of the draft someone just so there's that third option there, just in case, like, you know, like you said, Diggs is bracketed or Davis is just having an off night. You have someone there because this year, too, is a very good receiver class. Yeah, well, it's still, uh, you're, you've you, you've packed a lot of things that I could that I could talk about in that in that in that little short statement. I mean, first of all, Gabe Davis has shown us what he's good at, and that's sideline stuff. Gabe Davis in his rookie year, uh, in the playoff game against the Colts, had three toe toe tappers that changed the football game and won that game for the Bills. Uh, I was at that game with Jay Spence the King, and we were just we couldn't believe he caught it again. Like there was, and he's done that through his. He did it last week. He's done it throughout his whole career. Get him on the outside on the boundary. Keep him keep him outside the numbers. And Gabe Davis, <clears throat> and not with comebacks. Gabe Davis is a great wide receiver. Uh, if you try to put him in the middle, get him contested. You know, get him double double covered. If you try to make him a number two, some sort of the focus of the offense, it just doesn't work for him. Uh, Stephon Diggs, as far as this year, the Bills need to be looking to draft the number one wide receiver. I mean, Stephon Diggs is thirty or thirty one years old. This is his eighth or ninth season uh, in the league. He's got four thousand yard seasons in a row. Several of those in the first three years as a bill were over 1,500 or 1,400 yards. He's got mileage on those tires. Uh, there's only a couple years left for Stefan to probably be a true dominant number one wide receiver. So the Bills need to be looking for the next Justin Jefferson to bring in here to play with Stefan Diggs so that in two years or next year, not next season, but the year after next, yeah. he's ready to kind of take over for Steph whose contract is going to be, you know, narrowing out, coming to an end. So, yes, they should be in play for a wide receiver 100%. It's kind of like how last year, how you guys went after Dalton Kincaid, which I, I always like to pick, you know, hey, get a tight end yeah. to compliment Dawson yeah. Knox because having a um, wide receiver too. I just want to bring up the James Cook thing too, just because Buffalo's been lacking that RB1 for a very long time, and now they've found one in James where mm -hmm. it's like, hey, this is a guy that you give the ball to. He's just going to bounce off people, and he's going to make plays happen. Yep. Um, but no, I, I do agree with you as well. Like, yeah, get a guy. So where it's like, obviously the Raiders tried to do it last year with Chandler Jones and Tyree Wilson. I'm not going to know the details about that. Cause obviously the downward spiral has been very, very depressing to see from Chandler, but it's kind of that similar logic where it's like not replacement, but just kind of like, like pseudo replacement where it's right, not right, right away replacement, but maybe, you know, Hey, two, three years down the road, when, like you say, the miles start to show and father time starts to catch up to you that's where it's like, hey, this guy can come and take over. Like, if you want to go get, like, a Romo Dunze or a Jalen McMillan, I'm saying a couple Washington Huskies because I just had my friend on who's a big Husky fan. Um, there's – they're just point case period. There's a lot of good wide receivers this year to look yeah. at. Yeah, deep, which which probably lends itself to the idea that the Bills aren't going to take a wide receiver the first round. They'll take him someplace else. But but I don't necessarily care where they're taken. I mean, for all intents and purposes, nobody drafts wide receivers better than Mike Tomlin. Uh, and I know he's a former wide receiver, but that dude has made gold out of stones so many times that leave his organization and turn into nothing. I, I, I You would be hard-pressed to find a head coach and a member of a staff draft more consistent, good wide receivers than Mike Tomlin. So, I, I mean, Sean McDermott should just pick up the phone and call his old college teammate and be like, yo, bro, who are you looking at? Like, don't give me your number one. Give me, <laughs> give me your number two. Who's your number two guy in this draft? Because more than likely, he's going to be money. Because that dude does not miss. What's but your yeah, backup James and what's your backup and what's your backup's backup? <laughs> exactly for the draft. But I mean, no, I mean J J James Cook has been. I don't want to say a surprise um, for me because coming out of the draft, there was a lot of conversation amongst those that know and those that study film and those that scout. And I'm not one of those guys talking about how James Con, you know, J James Cook is not an every down back. He's not a RB one. Uh, he's only he only had 14 touches at most like in college in one game. So he's not that guy. He has bad contact balance. Like there's, there's a lot of stuff coming out on him that to me just didn't make sense because I don't know how you can judge a man's contact balance when every time he touches the football, he's basically running full speed six yards before he gets touched. I mean, if you're running full speed and somebody glances you, you're going to fall down. You never saw him in the middle of the pile. Well, now you're seeing that he does have good contact balance. You're seeing that he does make good decisions. You're seeing he can carry the ball 30 times in a football game. Uh, I love what I'm seeing from James Cook, and it's great to have from a t for a team that has always had a good running game. This Buffalo Bills team, even when they were trash, Travis Henry, Willis McGahee, Fred Jackson, like we, Marshawn Lynch, we always had a good running attack. For us to go the amount of time we went without one and almost be befuddled has been strange. But yes, it's great having James Cook on this football team, and 
beginning to kind of show up. It's it's awesome. Exactly. And then speaking of good running backs, obviously we got a lot of games to talk about this week. We get there's football on tonight, which I was dead mm. wrong about the result. The you thought the Jets were going to beat the Browns? Cover, cover. I thought they would cover, cover. cover. Gotcha. Cover. gotcha. I thought they yeah. would cover the six and a half. I did not think they were going to win. Um, this this Jets team is just bad. In Cleveland, I'm going to say this right now. I know the first game we're going to talk about Detroit, Dallas. Everyone wants Dan Campbell coach of the year, yeah. but I think Dan Campbell. Unless they get the one seed, I feel like Campbell has just met expectations. You're Kevin right. Sta- Kevin Stefanski, I think, is a man who, if they make the playoffs. Look, he was dealt every bad hand. He had my hottest seat entering the year because I was always like, "What was hap- what's happening in Denver right now? The opposite was going to happen where there's no getting rid of the quarterback. So, hey, head coach, you're going to be unfortunately gone. But now with Kevin Stefanski, he's turned what's been a disastrous – what could have been a disastrous season into 10-6 – and six, well, not 10-6, 10-5, and five, excuse me, looking like 11-5 and five, unless they, the Jets come back miraculously. And playoff berth for a city that – you know what? For a long two playoff berths for them in less than five years is a damn good accomplishment if you're a Cleveland Brown. It's odd to me that Kevin Stefanski would be that guy that people would pick because if if he's that guy that you would pick, then he underperformed last year, right? So because yeah. he's got a very much the same roster. Uh, yes, he did lose. Uh, you know, his running back, his RB one in the beginning of the season, but they went back and got Kareem Hunt, who knew the system. So it was like yeah. plug and play. It's not like they went and got some guy off the pine or they got a guy that was a practice squad player. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I don't know. I mean, he's, it's a good story. Sure. Um, I, I, Sean McDermott might be a candidate as much as, as much as Bill's Bill's mafia has wanted McDermott to be the coach of the year in uh, several years, like for the last couple of years, this year might be the year. I mean, coming off of what they came off of last year, what they've gone through this year, the losses that they've gone through going again from 11th in the AFC, AFC to potentially if they make it to the number two, if the bills get the number two seed, I think yeah. Sean McDermott's in play. I think Josh Allen's in play for the MVP. I don't think Josh Allen deserves the MVP, but I think he's in play. I think this, of all years, this is the year for there to be a non-quarterback MVP for the NFL. But that's, yeah. Christian McCaffrey or Tyree Kill are my two MVP yep. picks right there. Just Nailed. because. But I think what's going to happen is it's going to go to Lamar Jackson just because if they get the they one can. seed. No, but they that's can't. Just, the voters just get the lazy, stats. though. He doesn't they, have the stats. The, the AP voters just get lazy and they see whatever quarterback has the one seed and they're He's got just like twenty two touchdowns. Josh Allen's going to have fifty. Yeah. Oh, well, I know. I know. I'm not saying. I'm not saying out here like I agree with him. I'm just saying that's what I think will happen because in the heart of hearts, and also to all these, I know a lot of the voters do not watch football all year long. They just wait until the end and then they see like, oh, like you know, it's kind of the flashy object in front of a yeah, like a. They got to look at the stats. They're going to look at the stats. Yeah. There's no way they're not going to look at stats. Twenty two is it? I think it's twenty two touchdowns. He doesn't have very many yeah. touchdowns. And Josh no. Allen's going to Josh Allen's going to have close to fifty, if not fifty. If the Bills do get the number two seed though and win the division, yes, one hundred percent. Josh Allen's name is in play for MVP. And like even now, like I look at the whole like a question I was actually dying to ask you. Not a question, but a hypothetical. I want to say because I know everyone likes to do the Josh Allen Jalen Hurts comparison for some reason. But I'm going to say this. I can tell you why. Go ahead. If Josh Allen is on the Philadelphia Eagles, his numbers are miles better than what Jalen Hurts is putting up this year. I know they have the touch push, but if you give Josh Allen all those weapons in Philadelphia. If Josh Allen has is is a Kansas City Chief, if if Josh Allen is is a Kansas City Chief, he's got multiple touchdowns or (laughs) multiple Super Bowls. I mean, it's there's a great deal of like the situation. Pat Mahomes is a generational talent and he's unbelievable, but he also ended up in an unbelievable situation that had a great football team with a quarterback that wasn't great, that played good, even with a not great quarterback. And then he shows up and puts him over the top. Like, yes, to your point, as far as Josh Allen being, if he was an Eagle, what would it look like? And the reason for the comparisons is because Nick Sirianni basically stole Brian Dable's offense for Josh Allen. And you, you watch the Eagles play football more so last year than this year. And you watch it and you're like, uh, I've seen this before. Especially if you're if you're a Bills fan, you're like, yeah. he's running Josh Allen football. Like this is this is Josh Allen's offense. That's what exact and that's why he's getting those comparisons. Cause they they've got him running the the Dable concepts that Dable used to basically birth, not birth, but you know, <laughs> whatever, bring Josh Allen to the forefront. Yeah, make Josh Allen the man that he is today, the man yeah. that like his third year ago, holy crap, he looks really good. Um no, I just wanted to say that quickly just because I know, too. It's like even the people that do the uh, Justin Herbert, like, oh, if Justin Herbert had this and Justin Herbert. It's like that's what the biggest battle always is Justin Herbert and the word if. There's just yeah, like, even, too, like, 
if Tua stayed healthy as well, it's the same thing. Because even this year, like, say if Miami wins the division and everything like that, no, he doesn't deserve MVP. It's Tyreek Hill. Especially if Tyreek Hill, I think, gets to, I would say, oh, not like around the 1,800 yards. If he gets to 1,900 or he's at like 1,979, oh. I don't know what his exact number is. He's That's where he's got it locked. Like, that's where I think he's got it locked. If he gets yeah. even remotely close to two, 2K yards. I think Justin Herbert is a great example as much as you know you did the what if thing. Brandon Staley should have been fired 2 years ago. Brandon Staley like I it's Brandon Staley should have been fired after the press conference this year where he said I'm going to continue calling the defensive plays and like you suck at it. Like why are you calling the def- that's the thing about McDermott as much as I agree with you when you said that they need to hire a defensive coordinator, they do. But this Sean McDermott, aside from the second half gaffes where they basically would go soft early in the season to prevent the win, because that's what a prevent defense does. The only people that that don't know that are coaches. Aside from that, that he has called better defensive games than Leslie Frazier has the pro or had. The problem is, is like the attention to detail on special teams has drifted. The special the attention to the detail on offense had drifted. Brandon Staley was awful and he was awful as a head coach. And to me was a big part of the reason. And I know they went and they got uh, what's his name from Dallas, uh, Kellen Moore to like kind of fix the problem, but it's not working at this point. Justin Herbert is a generational talent as well with every bit of the skill set that Josh Allen has outside of his legs. Josh Allen's a purple unicorn. Um, he should, if he was, if, if he was in Dan Campbell's, if he, if he was a Detroit lion, they would probably be undefeated this year. Oh, a thousand percent. It's also just funny with LA too. The fact that it took not losing in the playoffs last year, but getting embarrassed two weeks ago on prime, right. which their spreads the last few weeks of Chargers were so weird to read because I remember they did cover against the Patriots in that mm-hmm. just terrible six, nothing game. But the next week they were minus three and a half against the Broncos. And I was just like, I don't like that. Chargers did nothing to impress me. Right. And then the next week they were minus three. And that Raider game was just this holy crap moment of like, yeah, they're really bad. I was just like, the days were numbered. My big question was always, what do they do with GM? And now we know that it's a full house cleaning and gone. Yeah, it's just <laughs> gone. That's because that's the thing too with with the Chargers. And next year, like they got to bring in a right offensive mind. Plus, two, their cap situation is nothing to smile at because a lot of their high paid players are not performing well. Or hurt. The only players that are playing well this year was Justin Herbert, and then Khalil Mack had a bit of a renaissance season. Shout out, you know, yeah. UB. Um, yeah. Oops. 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 As the uh, Jermaine Johnson or the pick six uh, or fumble yep. six, I didn't see it. Um, it pick, pick six. Tip yeah. ball. Good pass. But going back to Saturday night, um, so we have Dallas and Detroit. Like when I look at this game right here, I I I don't get why Dallas is five and a half. I get there's the whole home field advantage thing, but that's why. That's. that's a, that's just it. I feel like if Dallas does not win their division, it's just a matter of time. Like, because I don't think them this year, if they go back to Tampa, because I think that's what's going to happen. I don't think there's a good chance the Buccaneers beat them and if beat them in the wild card round. Dallas is an enigma, and Dallas is. Uh, I mean, they as much as Buffalo gets a lot of uh, trash talk for Duff. the seven, 17 year drought. Um, where we didn't make the playoffs even accidentally once. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some funnier, laughable stories out there, like the fact that the Dolphins haven't won a playoff game in 23 years. The Cowboys, going back to 95, when they won the Super Bowl, haven't won a playoff game. Like, since 1990, well, we went to the, we, and it's always, you can't have conversations about it because it turns into, well, at least we got a Super Bowl. It's like, that's the conversation. Like you're you're a Dolphins fan, and you're making fun of me because the Bills haven't won a Super Bowl, and you haven't even your team hasn't won one in your lifetime, and you're making fun of me because we haven't made we haven't won the Super Bowl yet. Like you can't you can't argue with these people on Twitter, but there's a lot of ridiculous stuff out there as far as that goes. But the the the, the Cowboys, to your point, are wildly suspect. I think there's a measure of that spread because as much as the Cowboys are suspect, they're very good at home. And there's still a, a little bit of a, we don't know who this Lions team is. And they're still the Lions. Like, they're playing well. It's it's the Browns. I mean, are the Browns, the Browns are going to be the, the five seed, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's pretty much locked in now, especially. The Browns are going to be the five seed. But you can't tell me Vegas, when they host their first playoff game, aren't going to be like, well, <laughs> I mean, it's the Browns. Joe Flacco's the quarterback. Are they going to be able to do this in the playoffs, right? I mean, that, that's, and I think that's kind of what's happening on that game on Saturday night. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree too. Because just Detroit's defense has been their weakness of their team. The only player mm-hmm. on their team that really screams to me like f the play up is Aiden Hutchinson. Besides that, there's no one else on that defense. You know that really like screams like at you yeah. like you know how you guys have Daquan Jones, uh, Havoc Reekers, Havoc like, Reekers, Havoc yeah. like the Havoc yeah. Reeking f the play up. Kind of like in this game, how you have Quinn and Williams on one side of the ball, you have Miles mm-hmm. Garrett on the other side of the ball, but you also have. Sauce Gardner for the for the Jets. Yeah, there's a couple of pieces like Jermaine Johnson too has looked really good. CJ Mo- Mosley, uh, Quinn Williams' brother, right? Uh, yeah, Quincy yeah. Williams. Quincy Williams. Yeah, they've got some good C- players on that football team. CJ Mosley's having a bit of a renaissance as well because I know when he was brought in, he didn't really pan out that well, but he's he's having a decent year this year. But that's the thing with Detroit. To where I look at this game, there's two bets that I love, and that's Jameer Gibbs over in rushing yards because what Cubs are doing. F- yeah, what Cook did to them. And then the yeah, that over at 52 and a half. Like I said, I think Dallas will win this game, but I could see this being a four-point game. That's where I look at that spread number. I'm like, I just can't see a world where the Lions get blown out, if that makes sense. I'm at the point where I don't know that I can trust the Cowboys for anything. And that might yeah. be the bait that Vegas is playing. Vegas might literally pl- be playing the, the bait game, right? Because you, I'm not saying that the Cowboys should have, could have, or are a better team than the Buffalo Bills. I mean, you're, you're going into Buffalo late in the season in the winter, and you're a domed – Texas team Don't that automatically home. right that automatically like like doesn't do much for you but they didn't even they, I mean they were in Miami and were a shell of themselves like they didn't yeah. play well in that Miami game either so that I mean there's a great deal of like are they pretenders I don't we'll see I mean I yeah this is why I don't bet it but yeah yeah I mean yeah like I said I like to bet so that's why I say it but it's that's just my whole thinking on this where I'm just like I can see this game being similar to the Dallas Seattle game from last month is also, I saw the stats to Jared Goff where in a dome, he's his numbers are phenomenal, or in warm weather, he's great. Yeah. You get him in some suspect weather, that's when play starts to dwindle down. So for this game, yeah. I think, like I said, I think Dallas wins, and I think that Detroit covers the spread. Just give it to that simple. And then with nice. Baltimore and Miami, I'm going Baltimore because, like I said, for two reasons. Because, one, I want your game week 18 to be for all the marbles. Because <laughs> I, So I'm going to – so I had a Dolphins fan on here who comes on all the time. He's a good friend of mine. I asked him to come on next week. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, we'll wait and see what happens. Like, you know, like <laughs> they, they're getting ahead of themselves. Just, just a smidgen, just a smidgen. Dude, getting ahead of themselves. Dude, don't forget what you're going to say. This is yeah. literally fins, fins up nation. Yeah. Like the amount of they are, they, they, they swag talk and walk on Twitter. Like they're the the Tom Brady prime Patriots with Gronk and Randy Moss. Like they're all over Twitter, like, oh, watch us. And then as soon as they beat the Cowboys, it's a oh my God, thank God we won that game. It's so amazing that we can you believe we won that? And it's like, I thought you guys were like completely confident. And they're like, Yeah, the little secret, we weren't. And that's <laughs> literally how Dolphins Dolphins fans don't believe in this football team. I don't care what anybody says, as much as they tell you they do, they don't believe in this football team. For me, it was the fact that they won that game, and you have your kicker doing one. <laughs> the fact you you had to kick five field goals against Dallas, like if right. that's a situation too, where it's like, hey, if you take care of them properly, I don't think anyone's gawking at you for what happened. I think right. also to the, in the game right now, I love the scene where the player has like a clump of grass stuck on the. Or oh, never mind. Elijah Moore is hurt, but yeah, I didn't yeah, realize yeah. he was hurt. But when the players have like grass stuck <laughs> in the top of their head, like I just that's that's just football to me. The football. Um, yep. I think with this game too, we also saw that Miami needs. I think Miami needs kind of that humbling as well because I'll also say this too. He's a good coach, but Mike McDaniel does kind of annoy me a little bit just with everything he kind of does. It's that like guy, like he's so, he's good at what he does, but at the same time too, it's like the boss. It's like the boss's kid where it's kind of like. Okay, you might be good, but you're a bit of a shithead. Um, but with um, but yeah, that's the thing with Miami, though. Right? I feel like going into and that's the thing too, going into the cold weather, you got a Baltimore team that right now, like offensively, they're looking good. Defensively, they're looking really good. Mike McDonald's doing a really good job too, because they have two college coordinators that have come up and really inserted themselves. Mm, mm. I think this is a game too, like I said, Buffalo, Buffalo just not Buffalo, Baltimore just kind of inserts themselves gets that one seed, and then you know what? Next week, they kind of take their foot off the gas. And then for – yeah, because yeah. I feel like, too, if that game next for you guys is either in that Saturday spot on ESPN or Sunday Night Football, fins, fins up fans, are, they're just going to be shitting themselves the entire week because they know if they lose, it's like looking behind here right now and, like, the boogeyman and the train horn is going to start going off for them. They've been, they've been like that for weeks. They've been like that for weeks. Yeah. Like, when it, what, what, what it was pretty much established that if the Bills win out and the Dolphins lose two games – and one of them to the Bills, 
it's a problem. Like they they've been they, the, the boogeyman. They have not done well. I don't think Dolphins fans being the hunted. They have not done a very good job being the hunted, in my opinion. But yeah, it's 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 going to be the whole thing is going to wrap up and be interesting for sure. I'm going to put this right next to the mic for just a second. I just want to see if you can hear it or not. But it's like this. Like the, the, for them, it's just getting significantly louder and louder and so, louder. I I live in the South Town, so that train horn. The stadium is in the South Towns. It's in Orchard Park. I live in Hamburg. I live in Lakeview, which is a part of Hamburg. Yes. Uh, grew up my entire life with the, the 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 four railroad tracks right here, and hearing train horns. My, it's funny because it's such a weird thing. Buffalo is is an interesting town, which we've talked a little bit about in the past. You've got the North yeah. Towns versus the South Towns. The South Towns gets all the snow. It's a little more hillbilly, redneckish. As far as that goes, even though we're not really rednecks, and then the North Towns is like where UB is and the colleges are. They don't get as much snow, and it's kind of like where the lawyers live. Clarence is where all the hockey players live and stuff like that. And they don't have Amherst. train tracks up. They don't have Amherst. They don't have train tracks up there. So for them, it's like, what the hell is with these train these train horns? And for us in the South Towns, it's like that's my childhood, baby. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the point I just wanted to make is just that that train horn just gets a little bit louder and louder and louder for, sure. for Dolphins fans. It's like for, for me, I know I'm going to hear it on Sunday, but like I said, for our game, it doesn't really mean a whole lot because I think for anything for you guys, it's more of a chance to I don't want to say get right, but I kind of want to be that. It's that sh- it's that chance to have that we're back moment. It's that chance for Buffalo to go out there and show the world, hey, I know about a month ago it was looking rough, but now the Bills are the Bills again. They're that team that you do not want to play come January. You don't want that team, the fan base, coming into your building and being like, hey, we're here to play you. We're here to break your tables. We're here to <laughs> drink a lot. We're here to cook pizzas in uh, filing cabinets. <laughs> Somebody's been to a Bills game. Yeah, oh, no, it's uh, that there's, there's, a, enough. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to be figured out before that, as far as that goes. By the time, I mean, they've yeah. got to get Stefan Diggs as a part of this game, th- these game plans. They've, they, they've got some things to figure out still. Like, we're close. They've almost got it where it's like, okay, yeah, we found her. But, you know, Stella got her groove back. Uh, yes. the, the groove is close. They're not in the groove yet, but they're getting really close. Yeah. And then, like, with New England, I think it's just that chance to either play spoiler or kind of like get a feel out for next year for like because for me offensively i'm not expecting much and then it's more or less how can the defense play because we know that josh allen knows how to kind of pick apart this defense especially we saw it last year a bit too where they struggled but then there's that like because last obviously this game last year had a lot of emotion attached to it obviously everything going on and obviously the anniversary of it's coming up on tuesday Mm -hmm. but as a whole when it comes to this game i think it's just more about like how do the Patriots defense, how do they play against a Bills offense that you give them an inch, they're going to run a mile on you. I say mm-hmm. that because I know it's Stephon Diggs too because he's looked good in some games against the Pats, but then there's been some moments where, hey, they can shut him down, but then there's those moments too where you think you got him, boom, he just jumps up for a 30-yard catch on a slant out route, you know? So that's where yeah. it's yeah. like that that dynamic of it. And I said this to you off air, I like you guys to win just because, look, it's, that get, it's the get right game for you guys. It's the get your – how about this? Stefan had said Stefan gets his groove back kind of game. And this would be the one. But I think the defense manages to keep it close just a little bit. But I think turnover factor is going to play a lot. And when it comes to turning the ball over, I'm going to have more issues with my guy, Bailey Zappi, even though I love the uh, like Zappi holidays, everyone. Um, but you say uh, that, but Easton Stick didn't have an interception. The Easton Stick went out there and threw the football over the yard, like to wide open wide receivers because the Bills were playing soft zones or playing quarters. And it's like, what are we doing? Contest these wide receivers and make it hard on the kid. But they didn't. Ba- Bailey also, too, just has like, it's kind of like the Kansas City game where he played well and then it kind of like falls off. So I'm just, it can go either way. But like I said to you, either we win. And it's like, great, they got another win. Or they lose, and it's, you know what, they keep their draft positioning because obviously I think Washington's going to lose out, but they're playing San Francisco and Dallas. So I feel like the strength of schedule thing's really going to come into factor considering yeah. how good those teams are to where Buffalo is. And like, no offense, it's just obviously we know what teams have better yeah. records so far this year. But that's, that's all I have to say about this game. And yeah, as for me for next year, it's kind of I, – I, I look to next year just to tell you this because I know top five pick plus they're like top three for cap spending for next year. So it's kind of like that – now look ahead to where I'll say this, and I don't know how much you've heard of this, but next year for me is kind of that you know what the Bears are doing right now, where they're like they're they're in the hunt, but they're probably not going to make the playoffs. Yeah, that's yep. where I want New England to be next year, where it's like, hey, play meaning not meaningful, but play competitive football, where your name's being tossed around come December. 
the next two the next two games for me are about the Bills game and I, who do you have last? Who's the last game in the season? The Jets. You the Jets is more about who's our head coach going to be because I don't think it's going to be Bill Belichick. And in my opinion, and you're too young to remember, and you're also not from New England, but Mm-mm. Brady and Belichick both being gone. I mean, who's the heir apparent? Is it Josh McDaniels? Is that who they're bringing in? Is it Bill Bill O'Brien? Is it? I mean, who who are they getting to run this football team? That is that's I. I it, it, the New England Pats Nation has come to realize what the Buffalo Bills realized when Jim Kelly retired and the and the Dolphins realized when Dan Marino retired. Like it's not easy to find a quarterback. And it's not a matter of we we're just great no matter what we do. I mean, Matt Castle is a great story, right? It's it's yeah. great that Tom Brady gets hurt and you go 12 and 4 with Matt Castle as your quarterback, a guy that didn't play a down in college football, I don't think, or didn't start a game in college football. But Bill the only bastion of greatness this team has is Bill Belichick. And I don't know who you're replacing and you could end up with a Brandon Staley. You could end up with a Mike Malarkey. You could end up with a Greg Williams. You could end up with some piece of trap or, or you could end up with Greg Williams, Mike Malarkey, Dick Geron, uh, 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 Mar- uh, Marone, and then a Rex Ryan. Like you could end up with five of them in a row, just like the bills did and not make the playoffs for 17 years. Like, what so that's my question to you like where's the team at where's the fan base at like who's our head coach next year so i have there's three scenarios that i have in my head one is that they managed to find a way to run it back because i feel like all those reports that have come out in reality and anything that comes out as a report from new england don't believe it it's like new mm-hmm. england always did this too the second it was found out that hey they're interested in someone in the draft Plans got next for it immediately. So I think it's just that. Taking Cole Strange. (laughs) No, no, no. But like every time there's a player or even two, it's like, hey, they're rumored to be going there. It's always like next. Um, Like the only real spending Belichick's ever done where he went cuckoo, obviously, was two, like three years ago now, where they just went crazy Mm -hmm. with guys like Hunter Henry, Judon, Uh, 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 Kendrick Bourne, John Smith. John Smith, yeah, the other tight end. Yeah, I was scared to death, dude, when that happened. I was like, how are we going to stop Hunter Henry and John Smith? And like the Patriots never figured out how to use them both at the same time. Like, I was so thankful. I was like, there's nobody that can defend this team. Nobody. So here's what happened last year. They decided we're going to use Hunter Henry as a run run blocker. Nope, you don't do that. You let Hunter Henry get on the flat and just catch the ball. Um, my thing, so it's like the one they either run it back, just they they say, you know what, screw it. They It's more about the sentimental thing at that point, even though if it's not right for the team, which I don't know. I, I, that's just my far out one. I have the, the two that I think probably will happen is one, it's either draw Mayo because that's been the rumor for a while, or yeah. even. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yep. I, I got a crazy one for you. What if they give it, what if they give it to this kid, the one that makes the weird, Steve Belichick, one of the goofy faces where it's just the like, hey. His nose and has a weird tongue. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, I'm just throwing that out there for fun. Yeah, the yeah. other one is they go out there and Robert Kraft just tries to get like that new regime where it's that I don't think they would go for an unproven guy unless like because I just I, I can't see them getting Ben John, or Brian John, whatever one the whatever the one in Detroit is like I can't see them oh, going yeah, out there. Yeah. you try to get the next Wonder Kid like I think it would be more about finding a head vet head coach with experience not like you know how it's like a bringing a Brandon Staley or something like that no like. I don't know. What if like uh, Vrabel gets fired from Tennessee? What if Vrabel would be an interesting pick because Vrabel yeah. would fit because he's got that New England right that that tenure that that he wore that helmet for a very very long time. That's an interesting concept. Like they could and, potentially make a trade for him, right? They could send some draft picks down there for him. Exactly. Meanwhile, when they get the pick back from the Chargers, when Belichick ultimately becomes coach GM out there, or even the other one too is <laughs> like you know getting someone of that elk. Though that's my thing. Like I don't think they're gonna go for like the crazy like random one-off hire but then it's just this whole like next year such an abyss of an off this is gonna be the most interesting off season in my lifetime to be honest with you uh yes it will be there's the top five pick there's the spending that's gonna happen plus do they have like for as much as they have cap room they have so much in-house signings to get done this year between the 2020 rookie class which i know a lot of people like to laugh at the patriots draft uh, draft classes but the 2020 class has really played proven itself to be have a lot of solid role con- contributors on there where it'd be michael wenu josh uche kyle duggar etc Hunter yeah. henry's due for a new deal kendrick Bourne's due for a new deal jalen mills surprise player miles bryant do like there's a lot of players that are due for new deals so it's kind of a mm-hmm. wait and see and also right. they have to figure out some stuff as well like i'm pretty sure our center david andrews is going to retire just because he's 
one of those players where father time's kind of catching up to him. And he's because he's had moments where he's looked good and he's had moments where it's kind of shaky. Same thing with Matthew Slater as well. Not shaky, just him is just Matthew Slater's yeah. been in the league for almost 20 yeah. years. And also right, I'll right. say this too. And Bill's fans probably will not like this, but he is getting into Canton as a special teamer. But it, I think the big difference between the two is it's just the fact that Slater's got the hardware to go along with the with with the resume that's all wait wait you think that slater is going to the hall of fame as a special teams player before steve tasker not saying before steve tasker i'm just saying that it's kind of like they have the same resume i just think that if you were to compare they do not have the same resume oh not (laughs) i mean as like position wise position wise not stats i'm not comparing stats okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. no no no. i just think that the different the difference ultimately is because i know Everyone looks at Super Bowls and MVPs as like this, like the bright shiny object where it's like, oh right, hey, they've right. got this. Like for example, I think Matt Stafford's one saving grace was getting the Super Bowl is what get him, what is what gets him into camp. You know, like it's that it's that whole. I don't allure. I don't know. I would I would one hundred percent agree. I I have no idea how Steve Tasker, who is arguably the greatest special teams player ever to play football, and, and I, well, Devin Hester. Well, he was a kick returner. He was a specialized special teamer. Mm-hmm. And Steve Tasker played wide receiver in the NFL when needed and was like dominant. Like they couldn't stop him as a wide receiver. He didn't play wide receiver because they didn't want him out there because he wanted. I don't know how that dude is not in the Hall of Fame. But once he makes it, it'll be fun to see some of the other guys to kind of go in. But shout yeah. out Westford of New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. awful goodwill commercial that I see from time to time up here. Yes. yes. The, the West Hurt ones are funny, but, and then there's also a Dawson Knox one for some like plumbing company or some HVAC uh, company as well. Yes. Yeah. The, the best thing about the West Hurt commercials is the fact that like Josh Allen, you've seen them. It, like you've got to watch him progress not only as a quarterback, but also as an actor because his first couple commercials were awful it's like you this is not your thing just throw the football that's your thing <laughs> <laughs> oh exactly but yeah that's just like that's just the only thing like I guess i'm not trying to diss steve task or anything i just think that's how no, the voters the voters look at everything it's just the, the the championships and whatnot but good lord it is the browns are 19 and a half point favorites right now and the jets are plus 3,000 if you're really willing to risk it um houston wow. and tennis yes um houston and tennessee i'm gonna keep the simple cj stroud is back Houston Texans find a way that is a head coach of the year candidate as well. And D'Amico Ryans. Uh, for sure. I it's there's, there's been a lot of uh, uh, what, what's uh, kind of bump bumps in the script this year, as far as just head coaches and quarterbacks and just such things happening that like, aren't net necessarily normal. And D'Amico Ryans being the defensive head coach with a rookie quarterback uh, and just seeing the way that they've played. That's not normally what happens in the NFL. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see that. But what's funny about that is that the Titans have a tendency to jump up and bite you when you aren't expecting it. It's like the yeah. Titans are going to get rolled, and then they win, and you're like, what happened? Wait, <laughs> what happened? I thought they were going to do that last weekend because I was like, you know, hey, they are they played against um, Seattle. Seattle's coming off that improbable win against Philadelphia. There's no way that Seattle wins two in a row, and then Seattle proved me all wrong. Mm. Um, and then with the um, Giants, they play the Rams this week, and I'll say this. The Rams are looking good at the right time, and the Giants, well – Mr. Marones ran out of his 15 minutes of fame. I know it was a great story. Don't get me wrong, but was it? No, it was a good story just because it fit the bill perfectly that the Italian kid from North Jersey playing the hometown giants and the whole, like if, if he was a Buffalo bill, there's no way that it would have worked. Like, you know, no. if it was Tommy DeVito no. was doing it in Buffalo, it's like, there's no, no. way. It's just, it fit the bill. But when he got benched, everyone's just like, oh, all this stuff. The hilarious thing I was seeing from a lot of people is saying you're hearing your some Italian uncle spew some very offensive language right now when Tyrod Taylor gets put in. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you're hearing a lot about a pocket racism from family members. But um, with this game, though, like the Giants, it's kind of that they are who we thought they were, and they. It, I, I still can't believe they cost. Like I was shocked that they covered their spread on on Sunday, but the fact that Darren Waller's clock awareness pretty much cost them a chance at winning the game. The Giants are a freaking enigma. Um, yeah. Just seeing what they did at the end of the last year, they've got great talent on that football team. They've got Darren Waller, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Isaiah Hodgins, who they never play, and he like dominated the, the end of the season last year when mm-hmm. they when they stole him from our from our practice squad. There, there's so much about, and they got Brian Dable. There's so much about that that just makes very very little sense to me, and so much of it screams football politics. But I'm gonna literally steer this train in a different direction, which is next year. Dude, Tyrod Taylor could have been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. 
Tyrod Taylor was, is, was, is a phenomenal talent, has a great throwing motion, throws a great football, can see the field, uh, was incredibly elusive, Mike Vick-esque elusiveness when he was younger. Obviously, some of that's deteriorated. That's a guy the Patriots should go after in the offseason. Go get Tyrod Taylor and get him a, a, an offensive coordinator that will get him to not be afraid to throw an interception because that, as a Buffalo Bill, that was his biggest problem. Two of, even now, he's got four interceptions. Two, way too afraid to throw the interception. Hey, Tyrod, do me a favor. Just go out there and let it rip, bro. Let it, and at the end of the day, the reason he's not a Buffalo Bill today and the reason we have Josh Allen is because he, he would not let the football go. He would not throw, and he's still doing it, throw the freaking football. If you throw an interception, who cares? Josh Allen has thrown three in games. Like, it is what it is. Go ahead. So we're gonna say, I'm just going to throw back to the Patriots for a quick second because you brought them up. So my vision for next year is rookie quarterback, Bailey Zappi, veteran quarterback. Because Bailey Zappi is Tyrod Taylor in the sense of serviceable back, serviceable, bad, bad, bad. Yeah, my words mixed up. But that's service what I'm telling you. Ty, Tyra Taylor is a serviceable backup. He doesn't have to be a service, serviceable backup. Tyra Taylor could still play football if you would throw the ball, if you would just throw the freaking football, let it go, let it rip. You know what I mean? No, it's not like, for example, Nick Mullins, who goes into a game and, like, hey, he has his moments, but also, too, he throws for 400 yards, but he also throws four interceptions. And essentially, those four interceptions are what cost the Minnesota Vikings last Sunday. That's Tyra, what I mean. I'm going to say something totally probably that, that would, if, if if your listeners heard this, anybody would probably be upset. If you could take Fitz, tra Fitz, Fitz Magic and put him in Tyrod Taylor and eliminate the Fitz Tragic, but but still get that same gunslinger mentality inside of Tyrod Taylor, he probably would have won a Super Bowl in the NFL. But he Ooh. just – the amount of times that I have seen him as a – and he still does it with the Giants. I have vivid memories of him like – holding the football They're, they've got a back shot of him so you're looking at his back and he's drifting this way holding the football as he's drifting and then you see the tight end in the background come into the screen right and and he's just drifting with him and it's like throw the damn ball <laughs> finally <laughs> like three seconds later he throws it like and, and yeah and then by then the defender has recovered and it's an incomplete pass it's like throw the football for the love of god <laughs> throw the football <laughs> You're just like saying, just please get rid of it. Please, for the love of Christ, get rid of the football. Yes. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if somebody could get it into his head, that it's like, look, dude, you're 32, throw the football. Like, let it go. Just let it rip. Pull the, pull the cord. Let it rip. But yeah, yeah. anyway. Um, then Washington plays San Francisco, and all I have to say about this game is, is if you're playing Christian McCaffrey in the finals of your fantasy football league, I'm going to light a candle and say a prayer for you because it's going to be a long day if you're a Commanders fan, which... <laughs> I feel like it's so Ron Rivera to bench your second year starter and basically know that you're probably getting fired next Monday. How is Ron Rivera still head coach in the NFL? But yeah, fair. So yeah. I, yeah. And then Philadelphia, Arizona, which I'm going to say this right now, but for his curate curiosity, wondering new England's off season is going to be Arizona's really in a pickle because it's, do you hold on to Kyler Murray mm. and potentially draft a Marvin Harrison jr. Who's taking that contract? That's the thing, though. I feel like they could. I feel like there's. Who's there's, taking that contract and that attitude? Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray walks onto the football field and into his locker room with all the moxie that Josh Allen should possess, and Josh Allen does not have it. Meanwhile, Kyle, Kyler Murray, last year to his freaking head coach, he's like, "Calm the f down." Like, do you remember that game? Like, he's coming off the field and he's yelling at his head coach, "Calm the f down." And it, that's the moment where, if I'm the head coach, I'm benching that guy. It's like, go sit down. To be fair, though, too, Cliff Kingsbury, I feel like, was only hired as a head coach because they saw Patrick Holmes in the season, and they were like, surely he can do that in the NFL. For sure. Um, for sure. No, I'm just saying that with Kyler Murray because I have the same with NFL teams, and that's dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things. For Look sure. The Carolina Panthers, they just pissed away their future because David Tepper was so fixed on getting a quarterback. So with Arizona. The wrong. The wrong quarterback. The wrong quarterback. Um, I don't even think it's the wrong quarterback. I think it's just the wrong. Basically, you He's put a rookie quarterback. You put a rookie He's quarterback a surrounded by a bunch of mid talent. Meanwhile, with, He's a bust. Yeah, like I like I'm not ready to give up on him yet, but I'm also not out here preaching for him. Obviously, Josh I'm, Allen I'm, is a quarterback that you put around a bunch of mid talent as well. Yeah. So just let's not forget that Kelvin Benjamin was his number one wide receiver, and then Robert Foster. Popeye's biscuit <laughs> away from a tight end. Um, I'll never forget that Monday Night Football quote. That and then the remember, I think they honored Thurman Thomas that night as well. It was a Monday Night game right. in 2018, but I think Derek Anderson started that game, not Josh Allen. I think you're also right about that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, that's just with, with with this game though. 
it's the same thing as Buffalo, New England. I don't trust Philadelphia to cover a big number at the moment, mm-hmm. but I do trust like something like the over. I, I wouldn't be shocked if this was like a points fest where each team is putting up at least 25 because even in Arizona's blowout to San Francisco a couple weeks ago, they still scored 29 on them. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, then, I, I don't I don't know what to I don't know what to make of that football game. I mean it's uh it could go either way, in my opinion. It's, it's football. It's football. Um, yeah. Tennessee, New Orleans, and I'm gonna say this right now. I'm on fully on Tampa. New Orleans has just been that team where I've said they need to do one or two. They're truly in football for Tampa, New Orleans. Tennessee. You said Tennessee, Tampa, New Orleans. Tampa, Tampa, New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. with the Saints, you either have to just say F it and go balls to the wall next year and go all in to try to win. Or you just rip the bandaid and rip the bandaid off and burn it all to the ground, which I feel like post Drew Brees and now post Sean Payton, the Saints are kind of in that position where they're like still trying to stay relevant. That's why I'm kind of thankful that New England did fizzle out because I feel like if this year New England was say New England right now was six and nine, or even if they were six and five and ten, six or nine, or even seven, seven and eight, it's that awkwardness of like, hey, we can potentially get there. But at the same time, in the back of the head, all, back in the fans' minds, we all know we're not anywhere close to getting to be there. So I feel right. like with the Saints, you got to look at it from a standpoint of, hey, maybe go the Houston Texan route for where two to three years you you fizzle out and then you can rise back up. Because obviously it's a lot easier. Like you, it, burning it to the ground's easy, but it's the coming back part that's tough. But I just think with New Orleans, eventually you got to do it just because you can't keep doing this cap wizardry every single year. Well, I mean, they're, 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 that's the gift that keeps on giving, for, giving from Sean Payton, right? Credit so card Sean, Payton, you know, Sean Payton ran up the credit card like every good ex-wife does, and then and then <laughs> dipped for for the sexy the sexy guy in Denver, yep. the sexy girl in Denver, as far as that goes. But which which is ridiculous to me. Um, backtracking a little bit, I, Josh McDaniels must be the greatest salesman ever because somehow he convinced an entire organization and a, and an owner that like Derek Carr was not the guy. And Jimmy Garoppolo was, and Jimmy Garoppolo has a lot of love for some reason from from people. But Jimmy has never been clutch and has never been good, in my opinion. It's always been more about the potential of Jimmy Garoppolo and like the one game that he played when Tom Brady was hurt. And it's like, oh my God, Jimmy Garoppolo, and it's like I don't get it. But somehow they let him go. But that's a different conversation for a different day. Where, that he, beat, where he beat the <laughs> Arizona Cardinals led by Carson Palmer. <laughs> Right. It's just like, what is happening? But anyways, Tampa wins this football game, uh, hands down. I mean, it's uh, Baker Mayfield has found something. They're, they're doing as much as I, I think Todd Bowles is probably one of the worst head coaches in football. Um, you know, they have found something in allowing Baker to be himself. And it's hard to lose when you've got Mike Evans and you've got right uh chris godwin it's hard to, it's hard to lose when you've got good people around you and people to throw the football to so i think tampa wins this football game outright even yeah. beats the spread mike evans quietly is one of the best receivers of the last 15 years if just based off stats but based off the fact obviously he had three years of tom brady throwing to him but if you look at all the other before years before that he was good he was good James, before. but that's what i'm saying though it's like he has all these thousand yard seasons with Ryan Fitzpatrick, with Jameis Winston, with Baker Mayfield. That's what it's I'm saying. Very, it's very Andre Johnson esque for sure. Yeah, like he's yeah. one of those guys when he retires, you kind of look at him right away and go, boom, lock, Canton. Kind of like right now right. when the finalists come out, and I see like I saw Antonio Gates for example, and I'm like, boom, like no, nah, yeah, going like in. how like yeah. how the Hall of Fame should be, where it's the guys that right away you go, boom, there's no discussion, in. you know, right away they're getting in. Yeah. Um, yep. But with Tampa, though, like, look, I was never a Todd Bowles fan. We knew what Todd Bowles was when he was the Jets head coach. Very conservative play calling. It's just this year, they found lightning in a bottle. And they've also, too, I'll say this right now, Dave Canales is a guy to watch for for head coaching gigs. because he's Lightning really- lightning in a bottle or a 9-volt oh. in a bottle? They found nine a 9-volt. Nine They're not really lightning in a bottle. Yeah. A 9-volt. Let's call it a 9-volt. It'll you're tickle kinda- your tongue. It'll tickle <laughs> your tongue just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you know what? No, it doesn't fully burn you, but when you do it, you're like, it's like when you touch something, it's, it's like when you, it's a shock. You it's felt shock. that, I felt that, yeah, but it didn't yeah. kill me. <laughs> no, I, I I love that. It didn't kill me. Dave Canales, though, I think is a huge part of why they've been good because we saw yeah. getting rid of Byron Leftwich is kind of, hey, Byron Leftwich isn't as good as we thought. And Dave Canales has come in and all of a sudden gone Baker's ear and Baker's looking great. I believe second, no, third best odds for comeback player of the year uh, right now. And as the um, – so basically I'm trying to vamp right now because I forgot what game is. Oh, right. I just remember what game is next. It's a wonderful game. The Jaguars are playing the Carolina Panthers. Without without their quarterback, right? So I, 
And they just and they just took uh, Matt Barkley off a practice squad. So I look at Jacksonville and I'm just like, the reason why they're losing is because Trevor Lawrence is afraid to miss a game. Trevor Lawrence isn't a good quarterback. That's, That's why they're the losing. Too. <laughs> he's but he's just hurt, so just adding to the agenda of everything. Like he's got some good pieces around him. Like Christian Kirk's been looking good. Evan Ingram's becoming a look. He's doing a lot better than he was in New York, which is really a low, high bar to clear. And then Travis Etienne's been a serviceable running back, but for them though. Their offensive line is terrible. Their That's offensive it. line is terrible, and they've got amazing weapons, right? Yeah. I mean, it's 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 hard to argue with the guys they got on the outside, but I have just never bought in. I haven't yet bought into Trevor Lawrence. Like, even the, the original conversation was, is he's huge like Josh Allen. And it's like, oh, well, what, you might as well just put him in Canton today. You know what I mean? He's like, going to be Peyton Manning. Because <laughs> he's so big. And, like, it takes more than just being big. Like, there's big guys out there that don't ever amount to anything. But, yeah, I, that, that's that's an interesting football game, too. Uh, it, it's hard to believe in either of those football teams. I mean, Chase Young is – he looks like a, I saw him. Or Ch- or yeah, Bryson Young. Uh, I saw, sorry about that. I saw, I saw a meme where it was basically they had like a little kid playing quarterback <laughs> for the Panthers. And I was like, oh my God, that's it. He's so small out there. He's smaller than Kyler Murray because he's not only not tall, but he's not thick, right? Yeah. He doesn't have that girth to it. Whereas Kyler has like not Barry Sanders tree trunk thighs, but he's got big thighs. It's just, it's just, yeah, dude. I don't, who, what are you picking in that game? You're the you're the bets guy. Where do you go? The Jaguars are the backup quarterback, uh, you know, or the freaking Panthers that find find creative ways to lose football games. I'm gonna go with the Jags to win, but the Panthers to cover, just because this is what it feels like. It's trending towards where it's like everyone thinks, oh, or or it goes the opposite way around, where it's just a complete Jacksonville blowout, where everyone's just like. Oh my God! Look at Jacksonville. Because who's playing quarterback? Who's playing quarterback in that game? I think CJ Beathard. But hear me out with this. I'm only saying this because I feel like after last week, everyone's thinking, "Oh, you know, Carolina can stay in there, and then they'll lose at the last second. But then Jacksonville just like I feel like with this game too, as long as Jacksonville doesn't do anything stupid and turn the ball over, they're fine. That's how I feel, that's how I feel about this game. They'll at least if they, I don't know how much they'll win it by, but I feel like as long as they don't turn the ball over, they're good. Take, take the under. Yes. <laughs> this is a 17 to 10 game or even a 10 to 7 football Take game. Take the under. Yes. Which I want to say that about unders quickly. Imagine going to the Minnesota Vegas game and seeing a 3 nothing mm. football game. Like that's the only time I think if I ever went to a football game and it was that score, I would be pissed. That's 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 a football game where you're you're going to the concession stand for the fifth time and you're like, what have I not bought yet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hmm. Try the very exotic item that might make me shit myself in a few hours. Right, right, right. I've had the stuff. nachos. I've had the pretzels. I've had the hot dog and the pizza. What is left on this menu that I haven't gotten yet? <laughs> oh, there's sushi. Let's uh, surely that won't rumble my stomach. <laughs> not go with the sushi. Football yeah. third quarter. Third quarter NFL football sushi is not the play. I no, say. it is not. <laughs> Um, next one up on the dock is Chicago, Atlanta. I'm going to keep this simple. Chicago. I don't like, cause you know how we were saying earlier, a nine volt battery doesn't strike twice. <laughs> Falcons. It's the same thing too, because the crypt keeper, Arthur blank eventually. And speaking of coaches that are probably going to get fired, um, Arthur Smith. Meanwhile, with the bears should have been, he should have been fired a long time ago. I'm just waiting for him to get fired. They bring in some coach and the next year is when B. John Robinson just goes stupid. And everyone's like, because people oh. like legitimately hate Arthur Smith and they think that like he's like he should be investigated. He's taking their unders. And I'm just like, guys, Arthur Smith's just a clown. That's that's all it is. <laughs> With a go go work go Arthur, go work at FedEx for your dad. <laughs> you know that, right? That his dad's the one who founded FedEx. I did not know that, but that's yes. amazing. <laughs> and his brother's their CEO right now. So why is he working? So I don't know, because he loves football. <laughs> go buy a yacht, hang out in Cabo, right? And then we're supposed to do exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, with Chicago, it's Chicago's got a their defense. That's the one thing I'll say of Chicago too. Their defense is what's gonna been really good. Their defense yeah. has been playing really well the last month or so. So yeah, that's all I gotta say there. And then Indy Vegas. I Dude, like there's a lot. There's a lot of shit games. <laughs> like, there there's a lot of crappy football teams in the NFL right now. In, <laughs> Indy and Vegas. Uh, I need Vegas. To, I need Vegas to win to help my Bills out. So keep 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 because if the Bills lose one of the next two games, I need I need them to make the playoffs. But yeah, I'll say this too. If you're the Raiders, I, also I have two things to say about the Raiders. One, 
you keep Antonio Pierce as head coach because you've just seen that it works and that never they never keep the interim guy. When was the never, last time the interim guy was was hired? Oh, I have no idea, but I'm just saying they'll I'm not saying they're going to do it, but I'm just saying they should do it. It's just yeah. Mark Davis is that kind of guy where he's just like, oh, look at this, like how Rich Basaccia got them nearly a playoff win against the Bengals. And then he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go get Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler and try to recreate the Patriot way out here, only to fire them a year and a half later. Aside um, from the fact that he inherited the team, uh, he he literally Mark Davis makes me wonder what I did wrong with my life. <laughs> It's like, it's like, I how did I amount to this when that dude owns an NFL football team? Like, just what is happening? So I've seen reports too that when his when his mom does pass away, he's probably gonna have to sell the team. So just think about this: that in the next twenty years, he's probably gonna be somewhere on a yacht or probably a or a tin can boat with like ten billion dollars to his name, just doing nothing, living the rest of his life. Just. Let that stew in your mind for a second. With, um, hot, with hot young young chicks telling him his haircut looks great. No, baby, yeah. your, haircut, your haircut looks great. Yeah. It's like, Mark, <laughs> do you sure you don't want to buy a yacht? And it's like, no, this boat was great. It's the little tin can or the little putt-putt boats that you uh, used to drive at the college when you were a kid. Um, but no, for this game, like, I got nothing really to say about it. I'm just I, – I, I, I'm going to – I know I'm going to go against you. I'm just going to lean Colts just because I feel like with Vegas – it's that like the luck's got to run out eventually where you're just going to lose the game. Because if you look at how the last couple weeks went, where you beat Kansas City big, you beat, and then you get Brandon Staley fired. It's just one of those things where I could see a world where, I'm, I'm saying where a lot, where the Colts get a win here, especially after how the bad the Colts looked last week. I, you, you, I mean, they, they didn't beat the Kansas City Chiefs big. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs, which was big. I yeah. don't know how that, I don't know how they beat the Kansas City Chiefs with, not completing a pass in the second half. I mean, you know, it's uh that was an interesting football game, which you know that's a different conversation for a different day. But it's it's it they've got to find a quarterback that can complete a football or complete a complete a pass with the football. If they can't, they're not going to beat the Colts because Gardner Minshew is not a clown. We know that. We knew that going in that Gardner Minshew could play quarterback in the NFL. So uh it probably is going to be the Colts who win. I I didn't pick the I didn't pick the the Raiders. I said I needed the Raiders. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I have a fun scenario, too, for you for the Raiders that I can see happening just because, you know, I say dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things. Yep. Next year, they trade the number one, for the number one overall pick to Chicago, and then Max Crosby ends up being a Chicago Bear. You mean Chicago trades the number one pick to, to, yeah. to the Raiders? And then the Raiders have to give up, like, Max Crosby or, like, Devontae Adams or something like that. But they just got the dude. They got Marta, um, Von, Vonta Sweat, right? Didn't they just get Sweat from the from – the... They did, but the, remember the Bears have the Panthers' first pick this year because of the deal right, last right. year. So that number one overall pick, I can see the Raiders being that dumb team where they give up way too much to go get Caleb Williams, but then they have no one around him. You know? They made the Jamarcus Russell mistake once. You think they'll make it again? You really put it in a pass Mark Davis to do it? Fair. I can't – yeah, I can't respond to that. Fair. That's how Fair. I look at it. I'm just That's like – I just you, you trust dysfunctional teams to do dysfunctional things. And yeah, where, but Max Crosby is like legit, dude. Like that's a good football player. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying like it's just throwing it out there because like how the Bear the Panthers this year it's well, they could really use wide receiver one. It's like well you had one but you dealt him to Chicago, so it's like a similar it's a similar logic. <laughs> and also I say Devonte Adams in there as well because I do think Adams is gone and I just do not want Adams on the Jets next year. That's my only. I can't. Uh, maybe it makes sense. Uh, yeah, not, yeah. The connection, Aaron Rodgers' connection. I, I just, yeah, I can't see Devonte Adams being the New York Jet. So for the four o'clock slate, let's just hold our breaths and count to ten because it's Pittsburgh and Seattle, and I don't even like this entire week of games. Like the more I look at it, I'm just like, good lord, um, Pittsburgh, Seattle. I'm just, just gonna go Seattle. Forward, just fast forward through the whole weekend. Yeah, like, <laughs> get me to 2024 and the good bowl games on Monday. Um, I'm just gonna go Seattle because they've been playing better, and I think Geno Smith, man. I mean, it's hard to argue with that dude. Like, what that dude is a legitimate NFL quarterback in his 30s, young, like early 30s. It's incredible to see what he's done. But I'm I'm with you, Seattle, Vegas, and not Vegas, Denver, and the Chargers. Jared Stidham versus Easton Stick, and I'm just going for I don't really care, and I'm gonna go take the under here. You know. Take the under because with these teams, I, I don't know where Russell's going to go next year, but I heard a fun hypothetical take for the Broncos. 
And it kind of burned me inside a little bit. But I'm just like, what if Mac Jones QB1 for the Broncos next year and they, they do the whole, we could do a reclamation project. Like, I could see them going that route where they go, they don't draft, they go like Ryan Tannehill, they go Mac Jones. They go for that guy where it's like, hey, we're looking for kind of an experienced player, give them another chance, and then it either somehow works out and they turn their careers around or it just fizzles and the Broncos are the Broncos because I say this for years now that they sold their soul to get the Super Bowl with Peyton Manning and oh, yeah. they've been bad ever since. No, the, the 100%. I don't I don't know I don't know that Mac Jones ends up as a starting starting quarterback in the NFL next year anywhere. Um, oh, no, no, no. I think I think he'll end up as a backup someplace and then get a couple shots because he's the backup behind a bad quarterback in and Denver, Brian into, Tannehill. <laughs> yeah, and it turned right right and it turns into maybe we should start that guy and see what he has, right? So yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Mac Jones has never been a good quarterback. It's been funny. It's been, fu- it's going to be sad to see him go as a Bills fan. I'll just say it that way. So, <laughs> well, you know what? It's all about the Zap Master now. Um, but yeah, like as this game, no one cares. And like even the 425 game this week. So I don't know if you saw the announcer groups, but Kevin Harlan and Trent Green are calling our game. Yeah. Ian Eagle and Charles Davis are calling Ravens and Dolphins. Nice. But Jim Nance and Tony Romo will get the car crash of Jake Browning versus Patrick Mahomes. And I think the Jake Browning experiment has kind of turned a corner where it goes yeah, from that's... one week of being like, that's why you've, that's like, you shouldn't yeah. have fucking cut me to, <laughs> we see why the Minnesota Vikings cut you. And yeah. this feels like the get right game that the Kansas City Chiefs need. I know for weeks it's always been this thing, but I feel like if this is the one where if you do not get right, you got it. You, you. There's, there's, there's other stuff going on there. So you're talking about the, yeah, it's Josh Dobbs, right? Josh Dobbs gets cut and then comes in. So there's enough film now on Browning that the defenses know how to defend him is what yeah. it, is what it comes down to. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, there, there's, there's kinks in the armor. There's cracks in the foundation. Uh, we're seeing a lot of things out of that football team we've never seen before. Patrick Mahomes angry on the sideline and lashing out multiple games in a row. Travis Kelsey looking completely dejected, chucking his helmet at the at the at the bench. Uh, go ahead. I think fa- he's still tight end one for yards. I think that's also a mix of father times catching up to him. Oh, for sure. But there's other stuff too. Like he's upset with the way that he's being used. Like it's it's amazingly hysterical. And I wish this was ESPN or the NFL Network, and the world could hear me say it's funny to hear Chiefs Nation or Chiefs Kingdom complain about this roster and how they're letting him down when he just won a Super Bowl with the same roster less than a calendar year you have ago. An elite it's like defense, like and your defense if, is if, elite. <laughs> if and their defense is better. If Juju Smith Schuster was this important to this offset offense, we might be having we need to have more conversations about Juju Smith Schuster who's a Patriot, but it's just, yeah, the, the, the chiefs to me, there's a, there's an unraveling that's happening there. And I don't know if it's because the enemy's gone that that offense is not, is not playing well, but to have the defense that they've got and to see the way that that offense is playing, I mean, they lost a football game to the Raiders who did not complete. Everybody knew that they were going to run the football every single play. And I think I tweeted it, it was McGuire, right? It, it wasn't that the uh, running backs name. Uh, yeah. I tweeted that, that McGuire just beat Pat Mahomes. Like that, that's that's the storyline. McGuire just beat Pat Mahomes because nobody else did. It was the it was the run game in that football game. It was crazy. That, that's what it was. But like I still think the Chiefs season is gonna go one of two ways where they either like we snap our fingers again and they're in Vegas come February eleventh, or they lose out early and there's just all these questions to be answered because I just Pat- want to see them I want to see them play a road playoff game. That's I all too. I want to see. And I'll say this too, out of everything that Pat Mahomes has done, that is the most impressive to me, is the fact that he's never had to play a game. I know he's played in Super Bowls. That's obviously different. But the fact that he's never played a game away from Arrowhead, that's just... That shouldn't be impressive. That should put you in a very raised eyebrow situation. Hmm. That you've too. never had to play a road playoff game? Because that's a completely different atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, but right? it's like, imagine him going... Because here's the thing, too. He's also never played in, like, Buffalo, for example, with fans there. No, he didn't. No, the one game he played was yeah. There was no there was no fans at the game. Yeah. It was co- It was a Monday afternoon at five o'clock as well. Uh, it was a night game. It was was it a no? It was a Tuesday or a, it was a weird. Day. It, it, it was got like, flex. It got flex timing because of people COVID. getting sick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They said that we are no longer changing the schedule and moving games. And then a couple of players on the Chiefs got COVID. And they're like, oh, except this game. And it's like, wait a minute. I thought we were no longer moving games. Yeah, and then we got screwed. But anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, it's the Chiefs. But um, it's no, the with the Chiefs. Also, I'm going to say this right now. It would have been so much better to see Patrick Mahomes on quarterback this year as opposed to last year. 
just to like and then we get to like see the behind the scenes of his unraveling and all this other yeah, stuff yeah, yeah yeah but another take i have with this team is it wouldn't shock me if travis kelsey called it a call it after the season it would not shock me i don't think I'd he be, does I'd be, shocked. I'd be shocked that team's done if that happens that's the thing because we saw it in the detroit lions game where everyone's like oh but you didn't have travis kelsey because I, I can just see it, too, because I've heard reports about him wanting to go to Hollywood and stuff like that, where I'm just like, he's got the best chance to do it right now if he mm-hmm. wants to jump ship. Because remember, he was doing SNL before he, which he was yep, really yep. good at, before Taylor yep. Swift. But I think, I'll say this, though, I think his brother's done. I think this is Jason's last year. I don't think, because Jason, like, contemplated retirement so much last year that yeah, he came yeah. back. So, and another player, too, Jason Kelsey, Hall of Famer as well. Um, but, yeah, with this game, if Kansas City doesn't get right here, I don't know when they do. This would be the game. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really have a response to that. I think you're probably right. If this is, if it's not here, they're probably out in the first round. Yeah, this is a sure get off the pot game for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep, yep, yep. And if they're not out in the first round, they might be out if they have to come to Buffalo. So, exactly. Um, which is again, that's a game I actually love to go to just to see a, see the Chiefs play and then like see that atmosphere because I feel like that would be an atmosphere unlike anything we've seen before oh, yeah, in dude. Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Um, and then while everyone's getting ready to celebrate New Year's, you can watch Jaron Hall take on Jordan Love, where for some reason the Vikings are the <laughs> favorites in this game. I'm just going to say this because I trust Jordan Love more, and Jordan Love's actually pretty much he's, – he's been pretty good this year. Serviceable. Uh, I, he's been serviceable. 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 Yeah. Let's call it serviceable. Yeah. Packers. This is the Packers. I think this is the game that the Vikings, like, they, they get out. And now another team with an interesting offseason as well, because it's who's a quarterback? What happens to Justin Jefferson? Um, if you're the Buffalo Bills, do you try to make a play for that? Because that would be that would not only be funny, but also scary for me. But a situation where it's like, hey, you can do that. Um, the other thing going back to Kansas City quickly, I've been saying too, is if you are the Chiefs, Mike Evans is a free agent this year. I don't know if he will leave, but you should try your hardest to get him. I don't want it to happen, but there's a cliff. There's a there's, the ledge is close for Mike Evans. Like he's not gonna play wide receiver at this level forever. Oh no! But Kansas City should like see the numbers and go like I will take Mike Evans over anyone on Kansas City. What's right What's amazing going back to the Chiefs because you did, and I was going to say this, but I didn't because we moved on. Yep. What's amazing about Pat Mahomes being a generational talent and who he is, and I think by by far and away he's the best. Not by far and away, he is the best quarterback in the NFL right now. However, he does not have that ability to make wide receivers great that Peyton Manning had, mm-hmm. that Tom Brady had, mm-hmm. um, and we're seeing that. If Travis Kelsey retires, I can't imagine that happening. But if it does happen. I don't know that this team is 500 next year with Pat Mahomes as a quarterback. Then they're still going to have a million games at like four o'clock, which I'm going to say this right now for Bill's Mafia fans out there who love the one o'clock window. You're welcome. <laughs> First one o'clock game since you played the New England Patriots. That's right. It's true. It. Uh, I, I, I was one of the ones that used to scream about not getting primetime games. And now this year it's been like, oh my God, like, <laughs> Like I've moved my post game show to eight o'clock in the morning the next day because I can't be up until two or three o'clock in the morning anymore. Like I do my post game show at midnight, like eleven thirty midnight after a primetime game, and then by the time I get it done, an hour, and I get it uploaded, it's two three o'clock in the morning, and it's like I'm fifty. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm thirty, and I feel your pain now. <laughs> I don't recover the way that I used to recover. It's like we're moving that thing to eight a.m. the next day, and luckily SB Nation and Vox Media has been fine with it. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, like yeah, yeah. give me some, give me a couple, give me a couple more one o'clocks just a couple more which who knows if you'll have but with this week and also i'll say this too with cincinnati kc not being flexed out i think it's just the allure of mahomes but also too it's the car crash equivalent where you're not supposed to look at oh, it they're, but they're burying, it, look they're, at it. they're burying that game which one they're, they're burying that game that's why they didn't flex it out they're burying oh, it. Uh, nance and romo are calling it i don't think they are oh is it the national game for four o'clock gotcha yeah gotcha well that's it's, yeah interesting I don't know. It could go either way. You you might find that the Bengals win that football game. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. That's why I'm just saying for Kansas City, I think it's an hour never game. But with yeah. Sunday night football, I don't know. Packers just seem like it's the better thing. But for Minnesota, back, this backing up, can we just have a conversation? Not even a conversation, make a statement that Zach Taylor is a very good head coach. Yes. Like Zach Taylor matches up well against the Chiefs and the Bills. He knows how to beat both of those football teams. So this should be a relatively interesting game. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and then, no, I completely agree with you because remember, the, the Bengals were essentially a roughing the pass or an unnecessary roughness call last year from going to the Super Bowl. That's right. That's right. Eagles, Eagles, Bengals, that would have been a hell of a game. Um, they, beat them at, they beat the Chiefs at home the year before. 
in overtime. And they've they've beaten the Bills every time they've played them. So yeah. I remember I, um, I actually have another story for another day. But with Sunday Night Football, like I just want to get through this game because it's like this. Like the more we talk to this, like the more I realize, good lord, this is why we spent like half an hour talking about the games and like forty five minutes talking about the Patriots and talking about the Bills. Um, Jaron Hall, Jordan Love. I'm gonna go with Jordan Love just because he's the one I have more experience with and more trust with. I, that's not using. I'm not using the word like wholeheartedly. It's using very loosely. But with this game, what's the word I'm looking for? This will be an awesome opportunity though for if you're the Vikings to go out there and just give your fans one last hurrah for the season because more than likely yeah. you're not gonna make the playoffs unless Detroit. You know they have their position locked and they're resting starters, but. Like I said, I'm going with who I trust, and unfortunately, Jordan Love, you get the cake a little bit more over Jared Hall. Well, I mean, the, the Vikings don't have Hawkinson and Justin Jefferson's yep. injured, and they don't have their quarterback. So, yeah, you're 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 going Packers here. With any also- any any Agar will have a good evening. We'll have a good night. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but with Hawkinson though, I thought it was like a thigh bruise at first because you saw him just trot off the field like nothing happened to him. Like ACL he was and MCL, both. Which. I want to end on this before anything. Is it amazing? It's like, it's like it was being held on by skin when he ran off the football field. <laughs> think about that. He ran off. I think if that was us, we'd be like lying on the ground, like writhing in pain. Um, Toward all is a hell of a drug, people. Um, with Detroit, though, isn't it amazing how they they swapped out DeAndre Swift and TJ Hawkinson and, and effectively and either Jamal Robert, Williams and, and Jamal, Jamal Williams, Williams, who Jamal Williams is the only one out of those three that's not having a good season this year. Mm-hmm. But everyone else that Detroit has gotten, David Montgomery, incredible year. Jameer Gibbs, incredible year. Sam Laporte is already a, probably a top five tight end in the NFL, if not, yeah, yeah, yeah. has position to go higher. So it's just what the Detroit Lions have done is nothing but remarkable. But it wouldn't be honest with you if I wasn't rooting for Matt Stafford to go back into Detroit and rip their hearts out wild card weekend. Just just because you know if that were to happen, that would just be all oh, that both fan bases man. would like that, that's like three hours of watching those collective fan bases, just even though Lions fans are numbering out here and Rams fans numbering is here. Um the fact that both fan bases would just be on edge for three hours because you have Detroit making it for hosting a playoff game for the first time in 30 years. The excitement is great. Season tickets prices shot to the roof by I think like two hundred percent. They went up, and then you got the old guy Matt Stafford coming back into town to potentially ruin it all. Just think about yep. that villain arc. You're an evil man. We'll just leave it there. So, got to root for a good story. But anyway, guys, <laughs> from myself, Joe Miller. Happy New Year to you all. Enjoy all the football as best you can. And you know yeah. what, guys? We'll see you next year. Go Bills.